Hello there, Mary and Muckers. It's your mate Stuzzbot here. I'm going to give you a quick look round this Land Cruiser, and then we'll have a peep inside and a peep under and a peep under the bonnet. All those kind of things. See what you think of it. So that's the outside, which isn't too bad, apart from lacquer peel on the bonnet there. But you all knew they all looked great on the outside anyway, so let's have a look inside. Lovely diarrhea brown leather interior, which is actually in pretty good nick apart from driver's seat, usual fray into the bolster and there's a hole there but generally can we have a peep in the back? Not too bad at all. So let's fire her up and see how quickly she starts. Right this is completely unrehearsed but I have full confidence it will start first flick of the key. I can find the keyhole while trying to hold the camera. That noise, I think, does this when you turn the ignition on and off. I think it's the remnants of the radio aerial motor, which just fires up for a few seconds all the time. There you go. First flick of the key. Being the VX model, we've got all the fancy walnut, pretend walnut dash and gadgetry, including, sorry for swinging the camera about, I know how annoying that is on a video, we've got the electric sunroof and electric mirrors, electric seats, all that kind of thing. Mileage, 214,000 and runs sweet as a nap, as they say. Okay, next up, let's have a look under the bonnet. Now, because the bonnet catch is dodgy, which I'll show you in a minute, we have this strictly non-standard, non-toyota fitting to help hold the bonnet closed. Let me just pause you here while I do the bonnet cap. Here we go. in like an oily sewing machine. Um, no blowback. Go round the back. No smoke. And a nice Toyota turbo whistle. 
Right, turn the engine off so we can hear myself think here. Um, people who have observed my wheelings and gnashings of teeth on the forum will know that there is a, I find a problem with the front end. If you, it doesn't really show up that well from above, but this, where my finger is pointing, that bar that the aircon radiator rests on has been slightly bent in and it's wreaked a bit of havoc on the mountings of the headlamp surround. So you can see where I've had to patch it up. It was actually held together with snot and string when I bought it. I've made it slightly more sturdy. <laughs> All things are relative. So, um, yeah, I mean, it's, it's solid enough. It's not going to fall off, but one of the side effects of that is that because that crossbar is bent in, this, which is the bar the bonnet catch attaches to, is loose. And you can see, and we see in there, it's actually cracked at the back. So this all moves about, which I'm finding difficulty demonstrating. Let's get my other paw in there. This all moves about, which is why the bonnet doesn't always catch properly. One time in every 20 it will, the rest of the time it just kind of rests on the half-cocked, for want of a better word. Okie doke, so that's under the bonnet. Now I'm going to put my filthy overalls on and have a crawl underneath, because I'm sure you all want to see there. Just thought before I crawl underneath I'll show you around the wheel arches. The camera will pick it up in there, so you can see there, just coming into the right hand side, that's where the f the chassis rotten. The rest of it is the usual Land Cruiser scenario, kind of surface rust at the back, and then as you go forward it gets better. I'll get underneath in a bit and show you properly. As mentioned in the ad, crappy tyres, none of them match each other. And that's probably the worst one as regards tread. Under the front, a lot better looking. I suppose while I'm on my feet here, I have a nosy in the back. Um, the back seats are available with it. I've just got took them out to fit more rubbish in. So as I say, time to don the overalls and I'll get in underneath and we'll have a look at the bum or the bottom. Hello again and welcome back. I'm now overalled up and crawling under. So let's have a look round the front first. Lots of surface rust as ever. Springs could do with a sanding down and a paint. Um, can we get in there? New LBJs last year. Proper Toyota ones. And if we go majestically over to the other side. Pretty much the same here. Springs need a sand and a paint. New LBJs. Everything else. Not bad. I'm trouble getting my phone down low enough here because it's on a mini tripod. Just bear with me a sec. There we go. That's a bit better. No major oil leaks from the engine. 
the odd bit of marking your territory drips which let's face it at least stops the chassis rusting on the front half next stop the middle right middle section looking towards the front again usual surface rust it's not actually rotten but you'll all be familiar with that it is par for the course with these You can see some new brake lines there, maybe. That's when I put the load sensing valve on last year. Do you remember my fun and frolics with that? If you're regular viewers of the forum. Right. Next stop. The back. The bit you've all been waiting for. Is that a hole there? No, it's not. Well, it is a hole, but it was meant to be there. It's just got a bit of dirt hanging out of it, so it looks weird. Oh, while I'm under here, where are we? Sills. The sills are oh, a hole in them somewhere, which I can't see at the minute. Maybe it's the one on the other side. Or maybe it's just cunningly hidden by all this muck. Right, next stop, the back. Viewers with a nervous disposition may want to look away now. We are at the back. This is a bit trickier to get in at with a camera. Too much gubbins in the way, but you can see it. Suspension wise, similar scenario to the front. Although here we've got a lot more surface rust, as you'd expect without our helpful oil leaks. Diff lock seems to have seized quite recently. It was working when I bought it, so I'll have to persuade that with a hammer and see if I can free it up again. It's probably seized through lack of use over the winter. Let's have a bit of a go down the beam here. So generally, it's not too bad, mostly surface, and when I bought it I was quite relieved that the axle mounts were sound. Note, use of past tense, because when I got under the other day, I found this. So this is driver's side axle mount has some stage decided to crack which is slightly irritating let's go around and get a view from the other side so now we're around the back of the rear axle there's the new load sensing valve well, the spring of it that I put on last year the rear of the axle diff Again, lots of flaky surface rust, but it's it's not porous. There's no oil on it. It's either not porous or it hasn't got any oil in it. One of the two. Let's have a look at the back of that mount. That seems to be still attached at the back. And it is very flaky there. Hard to tell what's going on. And now, if we can get up here on the side rail, this is the bit I actually knew about before. We've got rot here. So, as per my previous posts on the forum, I was kind of moderately happy with the state of this one, because up until the other day when I looked and found the axle mount had cracked, this was the only places where I had actually chassis gone through. So this is well behind the axle, which was good, but running up either side of the fuel tank. And it's a similar story on the other side. So where are we? Get out of the way. There you go. Same on the other side. Chassis reel needs a 
hatch there. Right, that's about it really. I've returned to the vertical to do my summary. That's it. That is my Land Cruiser. As I say, quite a few problems with it. Oh, here comes the postie. Better get out of the way. Sorry about that. Royal Mail stopped play. Had to get out of the way so the postie could get past. I think I did my summing up before he arrived, so I can't remember what I was going to do next. Sure, it was all terrific. Oh, I know. I was going to show you the fluids. The fluids. Coolant. Nice and healthy and green. Doesn't overheat at all. I've had it up Shap Summit. It pulls up there at 80. No problem at all. And I demonstrate the subtle art of putting on the radiator cap one handed. There you go. Boy, he's a genius. Okay, oil. Well, it's going to be black, isn't it? Because it's a diesel. But let's have a wee look anyway. At least it shows there's no froth in it. No head gasket woes. And tranny fluid. And I did flush this last year, but I doubt it will be cherry red because it probably needs a couple of flushes because it hadn't been done ever, I don't think. Let's have a go anyway and see what we got. Ooh, it's quite grey. Not a not as bad as it was before I flushed it, but as I say, could probably do with another one. Having said that, the transmission is sound on it. No problem at all, no nasty noises. And that fluid may not be pink anymore, but it's still quite clear. Right, summary number two. That's it. That's the cruiser. As you can see, quite a few problems but no show stoppers really it just needs somebody with a bit more room to work on it than I've got here which is basically the lane outside my house so you know no facilities bad workman blames his lack of facilities but anybody that wants this it's 1750 which I think is reasonable you're still getting a lot of motor for your money if it doesn't go, if nobody's interested, which, let's face it, nobody seems to be so far, I will probably just keep it myself and use it to tinker on. But, it's a good motor. Drives well, pulls well. Doesn't make any nasty smoke or leak too much oil or any of those bad things. Just the usual Toyota problem of, they haven't heard of rust in Japan apparently. So there you go, Stuzbot signing off.